Yo, what's up Game Weepers, Coach Six back again, and in today's video, we are going over the 15 strongest top laners who you have to start playing in 11.2, and what makes them so damn good. We've got bruisers, we've got mages, we've got tanks, we've got a pro guards ad again, this video has everything, so make sure to stick around until the end. Now, as you guys head on over to our amazing website, GameWeep.com, to check out the Challenger Tier Courses Guides videos, which are guaranteed to help you improve via the links in the description and comments section, I have a question for you. You mad? That's not it, don't worry. I want to know, okay, which champion you are banning at the moment. Now, my bet is that most of you are banning Darius, but hey, maybe there's one really big counterpick to your main that you have to perma-ban instead, so let Coach Cheese know in the comments. All right, let's get into it, and starting us off, we have the one and only mage on this list. Now, this champion is a very solid blind pick, doesn't rely on mana, thank god, can hard stop most melee champions, is range, and is the scariest team fighter for enemy squishies. And yes, our 15th pick is Kennen. Now, you don't see Kennen much because the mana-less AP mythics aren't in a great spot. You know Rocket Belt, Night Harvester, and Riftmaker, but you can still dominate popular top laners with a cheeky Kennen pick, and if your team is in desperate need of some AP, Kennen's the answer. Now, one tip you can apply instantly in your game so you can win for sure is to hold onto your stacked auto attack from your W because this deals more damage and you can then exert pressure in the lane by standing close to your minions threatening to chunk and mark your opponent if they move up. Just make sure to ban Aurelia. Now if you don't want to ban Aurelia and you want to dumpster all those tryhards you have to pick this next champion. And just ahead of Kaneen we have the first of many bruisers on this list in Kel Supri. He is one of those champions to abuse Gore Drinker, Ravenous Hydra and Sterix Gage, the ultimate sustained build and she is the ultimate duelist Fiora. Now the Healing in the game at the moment is still insane, and Fiora is one of those champions that benefits from it. You heal off your vitals and ultimate, and also through Conqueror and your core items I just mentioned. Now, the reason Fiora can destroy popular bruises and tanks is because one well timed repost and you 100% win every single fight. Playing around your vitals is also key, and here's a tip that will help you 1v9 games instantly. If the current vital on the enemy champion is almost impossible to proc, like it might be behind them, just run out of vision, and it will reset to a more favorable position. Also keep in mind that if you're brush camping, your vitals will appear on an enemy champion, so they will know you are nearby, so don't think you're fooling anyone. Now just ahead of Fiora, we have a champion that got huge buffs back in 11.1, and is still immensely powerful. Now if you're up against a tank, there is only one champion you need that guarantees a W, and that's Gnar. You can destroy them in lane as mini Gnar with your range and sustained poke, and after beating them down in lane, you will outshine them in teamfights simply because you're more fed. Now against bruises, there are some scary matchups. Aurelia is one of them, Jax is another, and the key in these tricky lanes is to time your hop to perfection. So whenever you see an Aurelia or a Jax cast their E, hop back and wait out that ability. It's also crucial that when you are Mega Gnar, you auto attack in between your abilities because this maximizes your DPS and stacks Conqueror. And this should be very achievable with all your CC, fight near a wall, and it's GG. Now coming in next, we have a champion I've already mentioned as being a real pain in the bum bum to certain picks, and that's why you have to consider playing Aurelia at the moment. Now one tip I can give you that will help you win lane and game for sure is to play around your passive. Guys, if you're committing to a fight, which is what you want to be doing on Aurelia because of Conqueror, this is the condition. Dax. If you don't have cooldowns to stack your passive or minions, you can last it to do the same. Don't type jungle diff in chat when you die. Now, a little trick that will help you out is that you can soften up the range minions in a way with auto attacks. And you can do the same with your W. It's just a tad riskier because you ideally want this for the 1v1. And this is effective because you can then blade surge to the weak CS to gap close to your opponent while stacking Ionian further. This is why range champions hate Aurelia, right? Because she can gap close easily and it's hard to repel her attacks. She's like a fly to a light. Build a Trinity Force Engage, you'll be sweet. All right, next on the countdown is another ranged champion that is arguably the biggest lane bully out of all the top champs. She's never picked nor banned, so if you want a champion to one trick in the top lane, Quinn is it. Now, what makes your laning phase special is Quinn, especially against bruisers with Engage like Jax, Camille, Riven, you know, these popular top laners, you can just flip them off with your vault and remain untouched. You can even do this when Tobias Fade on GP triggers his powder kegs. Very useful to know. Now, one more thing. You know those point and click abilities you see a lot like Garen's Damascian Justice or Mordekaiser's Realm of Death? Well, you can cancel them by timing your cues so it lands as they are caught in that animation. But please remember that you have to be out of near sight range to pull this off. If you're checking out the details of Mordekaiser's mates, for example, he will still be able to see you. Go Force, 
Stormraiser, Infinity Edge. We're into the top 10 now, guys, and let me know if you agree or disagree with any of our picks in this video. And starting off the top 10, we have a champion that is an absolute monster in the early game, and that's Renekton. Now, the croc is like Fiora, extremely hard to deal with in lane, and has ridiculous sustain. In low elo, he is very hard to play against because there aren't many windows of counterplay, and his point and click stun, well, it's not fun when you lose half your health in the early game, is it? And even in high elo, his synergy with strong AP junglers like Talia and Nidalee, again, because of his targeted stun, make it impossible to win the top side of the map. Now there is one build I want you to try out against squishier top laners and teams, and that's Prowler's Claw and Bork. The lethality you get and Prowler active allow you to legit one-shot anyone, even without your ultimate. Just slice towards the enemy champion and use Prowler's active, auto attack and stun, yeah they're dead. Let me know if you've tried this already by the way, it's super fun and broken in the right game. Now ahead of Renekton, we have a champion that can completely nullify AD top laners. He might be very weak against scaling mages, but most players are picking bruises at the moment, so Malphite is well worth pulling out. Because of your passive and armor that empowers your whole kit, you win every trade against all the popular tops right now. On top of that, one way you can take your opponent completely out of the game early on is to rush a Bramble Vest, especially against champions who have healing like Renekton, Fiora, Trindamir, and do not forget, Grievous Wounds now last an extra second. They will be hella sad. Now remember to use your W immediately after auto attacking to reset that timer. Just be careful spamming your Q in the early levels because yeah, it costs 70 mana which is a lot and you can run out of blue real quick. Next up we have a champion that has caused us to say WTF more times than any other but thankfully the 11-2 changes have dialed back some of this Darkens crazy power but not enough to stop him from being on our top lane list. Aatrox with Gore Drinker and Stereos Gage as I'm sure you're all aware is borderline uncontrollable right now and is very oppressive in lower elos because well spacing doesn't really exist, like the enemy team will be in BO range of one another, so as Aatrox you just gorge drink it back to full HP and knock them all up. Now you have to place importance on your ultimate guys, and what I mean is don't just use this for the sake of it, use this to kill or to survive. Perhaps the key detail for your world ender is that when you transform you fear minions. So if you're fighting in a big creep wave, you can press R to de-aggro the entire wave and take less damage. Really helpful to know. Just make sure to ban Aurelia, and yeah, you're good. Alright, uh, listen to this one, guys. Our other pals at Skillless Cap put this dude in the top two top laners for this patch, even though he got a big nerf in 11.2 that has seen him drop down to just above a 50% win rate. Now, how does that work? And that's why Darius is our number seven pick. You see, the nerf right gave Darius a huge, as you can see on the screen, especially in lower levels of play, because you probably picked Darius no matter what, right? So you're high Hard lanes become even harder. In early game all ins and when you use your ultimate for example, you are missing out on crucial damage and are therefore weaker and more exploitable. Like a Wukong who is one of your biggest counters, there is literally no chance now of you ever being able to kill him in a 1v1 because of this nerf. In higher elo for sure, most players are going to pick Darius to counter the enemy top laner so it's felt less, but overall, this is big. The good thing though is that most players don't know how to take advantage of Darius's lack of mobility and when you get stride breaker, lots of your opponents are just going to leave because this gives you the the gap closer you need, an extra slow, and stickiness so you can terrorize pretty much anyone. Coming in next at number 6, we have a champion that has been close to the top of the win rate since he got buffed in 1025, and that's Nasus. So they reduce Susan's Q cooldown by half a second in 1025, and this is massive because when you give that ultimate a pop, this Q cooldown is even more relevant because it's halved. So imagine this late game, your Q is on a 1.75 second cooldown, and that's without any ability haste. The Wither Divine Sundra, which should always be your Mythic, a Frozen Heart, and Spirit Visage, for example, you have all the stats you need and 50 ability haste from these, the same as 33% cooldown reduction. So at level 16, your Q is on just over a 1 second cooldown, which is nuts. Like, what can a champion do when you charge at them and wither them? Just pray. That's that's about it. Now we're into the top 5, guys, and if you want to master any of the champions in this video, or any champion at all for that matter, head on over to our website, GameLeap.com, because we have the best guys, the best courses, the best content to help you improve and climb out of ELO Hell. Links down below below. Now coming in at number 5 is a champion similar to Darius in the sense he wreaks havoc in low elo and thrives off the extra ability haste stride breaker now offers, so if you want to spin to win this patch, Garen is one of the best top laners you can pick. Now the change behind Garen's sudden arrival on our list is the mythic stride breaker, because in 11.1, Riot doubled its ability haste while reducing its AD by only 5. And here's the thing, abilities on champions like Garen, Renekton, and Darius really really matter, which is why the extra haste is way more valuable than the 5 AD. This allows you on Garen to spin more, to strike more, to shield more, it is ideal for 1v1ing in the top lane. 
Now, Garen has the second highest win rate out of all the top laners right now, which goes to show just how strong his synergy with Stridebreaker is. Just ahead of Garen at number four is the last tank on this list, but the best of them. So if you need a tank in your team or you're confident in stomping the enemy top laner, Cho'Gath is one of the premier champs. Now, what makes Cho'Gath so good right now is his incredible sustain in lane via his passive, which gives him health and mana each time he kills an enemy, minions included, and the updated mythic Frostfire Gauntlet, which was changed this patch. It's 400 gold cheaper, gives more ability, haste and okay it doesn't give as much armor but the real key to your success is its mythic passive so for each legendary item you gain 100 health and six percent size now the health is huge for the gaff because your e and r deal more damage the more hp you have and the increased size means you can tank skill shots thrown to your team to keep them safe Cho is a real monster this patch guys pick him up moving on to the top three and the bronze medalist for 11.2 is a champion that has very little counterplay and can impact the rest of the map at level six this is none other than pantheon of course now, why is Pan so busted? Well, you can bully any champion in the top lane, you know, because you have a point and click stun. And once you buy plated seal caps, you have all the tankiness you ever need. Now, you have to understand, guys, that your Comet Spear now costs less mana. And if you release it as soon as you cast it, so if you just tap Q, 60% of its cooldown is refunded. This makes you even more obnoxious early on and impossible to trade with. Now, you can build Eclipse if you're against a Squishy, Gore Drinker if you're against someone tankier. Playing Panfish is guaranteed Ws this patch. Alright, the runner-up for the best 11.2 top laners, and she is one of the best 1v9ers in the entire game right now, and that's Camille. And when you get to your three core items, Trinity Force, Sterex Gage, and Ravenous Hydra, you are the best champion on the Rift, hands down. It's just getting to this stage. I'm sure you've come across late game Camille before, who, you know, takes half your HP with one empowered Q. It's not exactly fun. Now, in the early levels, you are weak, believe it or not, so it's important to play around your passive so you have a shield for when you trade, and to save your E. You don't want to be jumping in when Trick 2G fans 69 on Uda is about to gank, right? Once you escape the early game and get your ultimate and team fights start happening, one trick is to use your ultimate as soon as you can in a fight on the enemy AD carry or mid laner. This locks them in place for your team to gap close. So try flank the enemy backline and you will win fights single handedly. Okay, it's time for our number one pick and it's time for Who Am I? Sponsored by Night Shrine, who left a lovely comment on one of our previous uploads. Appreciate it, brother. All right, so standing still could be my biggest weapon. I have a 56% win rate in high elo. The main reason being I abuse the Gore Drinker Gauge and Hydra combo better than anyone else. Seeing as most champions I play against the AD, my passive is super effective, and when the lane is long and my enemy oversteps, I have great mobility, CC, and damage to punish them for it. <laughs> now, how good was that laugh out of 10? That was actually terrible, but yeah. The best top laner guys for another patch is Wukong, so get around him. He's still the number one. Thanks so much for watching. Please leave a like on the video and subscribe and turn on all notifications. This has been Coach Jigs, and until tomorrow's upload, peace.